In Angular, your views are defined within HTML templates, and templates are defined within the component decorator. You're also able to define inline HTML templates as well as external templates within HTML files. Now you're also able to display data that's defined within the component through what's called interpolation, as well as use various conditionals within the template, which we're all going to look at very shortly in this clip. Now first, we're carrying on from the previous lesson that's a part of this free Angular 4 course. And so make sure if you don't currently have it already running, run ng-serve on the project folder, and then also visit in the browser localhost 4200 once this command has run. All right, great. So going back, here I have the app.component.ts file from the previous lesson, and this is what is generated by default when you generate a project with the Angular CLI. And we can see within the component decorator right here, we have template URL. All right, so based on generating a project with the CLI or command line interface, by default, it uses the template URL metadata property to define an external template by default. So as a general rule of thumb, you use template URL and you define all of your HTML within that external template file when there's a considerable amount of HTML associated with that given component. Otherwise, if you use inline HTML, which we'll get to shortly within the component itself, it will become quite unorganized and hard to navigate through that file. All right, so what if your component only does have a few lines of HTML? Well, in this case, then it makes sense to define inline HTML through the component decorator. Okay, so the way we do this, we'll change template URL simply to template and then we'll put in a single line of HTML right here. So we'll just put in H1, hey guys, and H1. So we'll save, and there you go. From now on, I will have this split screen set up just so we can see uh, at a moment's notice when we save the file and the changes that reflect in the view. Okay, so what if you wanted to define multiple lines of HTML? Well, let's go ahead and hit enter here to give ourselves some space. And you can see immediately we have red squiggly lines. And this is because when you want to define multi-line HTML or even CSS in the future, which we'll get to a little bit later, we need to change these single quotes to what are called backticks and simply delete this. And it's the tilde key. And you'll see the type of character that that looks like and change both of them and then they go away and they'll work now. So now let's go ahead and just put in a simple uh, paragraph tag. How are you doing? And save it. And there you go. Very, very, very simple stuff. So in terms of defining templates, that's all there is to it. You just have to determine whether or not you want to place your HTML files in an external template through the template URL property or simply do inline like we have here. Okay, so let's move on to the next logical step. How do we define and display dynamic data in the template? Well, that's called interpolation. And it's just a fancy word for displaying data in the template. And this data is usually defined within a component class down here. All right, so when you use the Angular CLI to generate an Angular project, it displays a title property, which we can see right here and it displays it through interpolation in the app.component.html. So it looks like this right here. This is known as interpolation. So it works by wrapping double curly brackets around a template expression. Now the template expression in this case is a component property that just says title. So this works very simply when you just have a basic property that's defined in your component here. But what about if we wanted to display an object? So what we would do, let's create our own object right here. We'll get rid of this title here. And we'll just name it my object equals. And we define the squiggly brackets there for an object type. So and we're going to we'll just put a gender, male, uh, age, 33, and location. USA. Save it. And then we'll come up here inside of our paragraph tags. 
we can't just put my object because if we save it, you'll see it just shows object object right here. So what we want to do, if we wanted to display a specific object property such as location, we just put dot location and save USA. Now, what if you have an array or an array of objects? How would you display those in a template? Well, that's what the ng4 directive comes in handy. So here's how you display a basic array. Let's go ahead and create an array right here, my ARR equals, we'll say him, hers, yours. All right, just some random bits of data there. And let's create an unordered list. So UL and then a list item inside of it, LI. And this is what we want to repeat. So li, we put the asterisk ng4 equals, and the expressions inside would be let arr, and this can, this right here, this name can equal anything you want it to be of, and then my arr, which is in reference to this property down here. And then we use interpolation arr, inside of it to display the data. So we'll save it and we could see him, hers and yours. So this process is exactly the same if we were trying to iterate through an array of objects as well. So sometimes you only want to display a given template if an expression matches some condition. So in these cases, you would use the ng if directive. So using the example that we have right here, let's go ahead and change this ng4 to ng if, and we'll simply leave the name of our object here, or our array rather. So we'll go ahead and change this interpolation here to, yeah, I exist, and save it. So because my ARR is defined already and it's true, then it will display this list item right here. So we can also use the not exclamation point. And in this case, it won't show because it does exist. And you can additionally use equal equal. And let me go ahead and change this. So if it equals, for instance, we'll say something here. And of course it won't show because it is an array and we'll change that real quick to nothing. It will still not show it. However, if we change it here. It shows because it equals something and we can also use does not equal as well. And finally, as in the last example, we can also use else. So let's go ahead and change this real quickly. So if my ARR, we put a semicolon else, and then we define a local variable, other TMPL, and this could be named whatever you want it to be named. All right, so now underneath this, we can use ng template and then we bind it to other TMPL, which is the name of our local template property, our variable, and I do, and we'll just close this off. So my ARR currently exists because it is defined down here. So if we save this, it's going to show this current element right here. Now, if we make this false and save it, you can see it now shows what is inside of ng template, which is no I do. And we can also use then. So after our semicolon, we can put then and create a template or local variable for a truth template. So we can say, for instance, this will be tmpl1 else tmpl2. Let's also change this to a div.
and we don't want to close that right here. And anything inside of the HTML target that you're using, the element that you're using for a then statement will not get shown at all. So there's no need to put anything inside as a value. And now we can simply take this, copy it, paste it. This will be template one, this will be template two, and this is for a truth. And this would be if it doesn't exist. So right now it's set to false. So it's going to say false and show the false template. Let's go ahead and save. And there you go. If this were true or equaled some other value, it would show truth. All right, so this concludes the basics of templating in Angular 4. And with the knowledge that we just outlined, you will be able to handle most tasks that are associated with your templates in Angular. All right, in the next lesson, as a part of this free Angular 4 course, we're going to learn about property binding.